Scott Ramirez, your host of Stand Out and Grow. I want to help your business stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. Building your business is really, really hard. And knowing what marketing and advertising tools you need to help you become successful is extremely confusing. After 30 years of working with thousands of businesses, I am here to help you make good business decisions. I want to help you understand the programs that are available to you so that you can stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. So let's get started. Hey, this is Kat, and thank you for tuning in to my podcast, Stand Out and Grow. So today I have an awesome um, guest, and it's all about memory. So I know that um, at my age, and I'm a little older, uh, memory uh, probably is a tool or a skill set that could always use improvement. And even if you struggle with remembering people's names at networking events or what have you, this is really a great opportunity to tune in and strengthen those skills, or at least learn some basic tactics and tips and hear from uh, Chester Santos, who yeah. is my special guest today, and learn ways that you can be better at it. So without further ado, let me bring on Chester so he can introduce himself. Hey, Chester, how are you today? Hi there, Kat. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm looking forward to sharing some tips with your audience today that should help them professionally and personally. Awesome. So I'm, I have to kind of um, like, I guess, ring your bell or, or give you praise in that you, you are known as the international man of memory and the world's leading memory skills expert. Um, your tips have been featured on the likes of CNN, Fox, BB, BBC World, uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, and so many more other publications. Am I right on that? Are, are we good? Right? Yes, uh, and and many more. I feel fortunate to have established myself as a thought leader in the field of memory skills, and oftentimes when publications need some tips in the area, they call me up. And I feel fortunate to have had that happen many times over the years. Awesome. So before we get a little bit of background of before, uh, on you, I just want to remind my um, listeners and viewers that if you have a comment, if you have a question in regards to this, please drop it in the comments, reach out. Um, we will get to them. Definitely. And this is a really great topic to talk about because memory, I think, is a really um so two things, it's important and it's a skill set that uh, is really hard for some people. So um, Chester, just give us a little bit of background about you and how you became the international man of memory. Sure. So I won the United States National Memory Championship. And since winning that competition, I've gone on to give presentations in more than 30 different countries on how people can develop powerful memory skills and leverage those skills for more success in their professional life, personal life. Also, if anyone in your audience happens to have any kids or grandkids in school, what we talk about today will be useful to share with them as well. Awesome. Now, so this, is this something that purposely happened or you just, you aspire to like conquer? I mean, like, do you know what I mean? Like, how, how did this just come about? <laughs> so pretty randomly, actually, I happened to be flipping channels one night and I caught a segment on ABC's 2020. They had a segment on the United States National Memory Championship. And it sparked my interest when I saw that, just because oftentimes growing up, I would get the comment from people, wow, you have a really good memory. So with those comments sort of in the back of my mind, when I saw that episode on this evening news program, I thought, well, people say I have a good memory. Maybe I can do well in this competition. But when I looked into what the best people in the United States were scoring in the various events, memorizing hundreds of names, decks of playing cards, hundreds of computer generated random digits perfectly in just a few minutes, I realized although I was, I was probably above average in terms of memory to begin with, I wasn't on that level. So yep. that's when I started doing research. Okay, how can one 
improve their memory from where it's currently at. So I did a bunch of online research, read all of the existing books in the field, found what seemed to be working best for me personally, stuck to training myself in that subset of techniques until eventually I was able to win the U.S. Memory Championship. And since then, I've been training people around the world in the small subset of techniques that I feel are the most powerful, the most effective, and that anyone can put to use right away in their career and personal life. Okay. And are you seeing seeing like a trend of people that are trying to improve their memory in regards to like, is it more or less professional students, corporate people, you know, CEO, C-level, like what is the trend you're seeing? Yeah. So it's very important for all of those groups for various reasons. All right. So (laughs) CEOs want to get better at not only business networking, but also remembering, better remembering the names and things about their employees, especially if it's a big company. Sometimes they have difficulty with that, but they want to make that personal connection with their employee students. Obviously, memory is fundamental to learning and the acquisition of knowledge, so it helps them to do better in school. Entrepreneurs, when you can meet with a client, potential client, and better demonstrate your knowledge and expertise, It's very impressive, especially in today's business world, in which if we're honest with ourselves, the average business professional is losing their memory ability. Uh, We're starting to experience, I think, a bit bit of digital dementia in general because of an over-dependence on these digital devices. But this creates an opportunity to really stand out, become more memorable in business if you will develop your memory skills. I love it. And I love that you said digital dementia because I agree that a a lot of people rely on different devices. And uh, here's one great example. It's a great example. And I know a lot of people can relate to this is when you're driving somewhere and you use GPS and it's very, it's probably a very local close place, but yet you're still using GPS, right? Because you don't want to take the time to remember, you know, the directions to this one or two place wherever you're going, you know? So I can totally understand and relate in regards to that. So I have another question because this happens to me sometimes. If I go to a networking event and I haven't gone for a while, you know, and then someone sees me and they go like, hey, Kat, And I'm like, I forgot their name. I don't know who they are. Do you know what I mean? And I'm sure a lot of people experience that where you're at an event and you're like, I don't know who they are. (laughs) And you're looking and you're looking at looking for their name tag. You're like, who are they? (laughs) Very common experience. So uh, that happens to a lot of people. And really, Given that situation, we are not taking full advantage of networking opportunities. We're obviously going to get much more out of networking if we can better remember the names of people that we're meeting at various events and other things about them. So I can give tips on remembering names for your audience. But first, I think it's important to go over three overarching principles first that will apply no matter what type of information that you want to get better at remembering. These three principles will always apply. One, try to turn whatever it is that you're trying to remember into something that you can picture in your mind because we're very good at remembering things that we see. So in the case of names, oftentimes we can recall, let's say you what you had gone to a meeting or a party and you met a lot of people, one of your friends was there. If your friend later describes someone to you from that meeting or party, a lot of times you can picture in your mind who they're talking about. You might even remember what that person was wearing, but you can't remember the name. And oftentimes your friend can't remember the name either, right? right. So. It demonstrates, I think, pretty clearly that when it comes to dealing with people, we tend to be pretty good at remembering what people look like. We're, we're good at remembering faces, but we're not nearly as good with names. And this is because when we interact with people in various ways, we see the face. The face is recorded into our visual memory, but the name is something more abstract to the brain. So one way we can get better at remembering names is to turn them into powerful visuals. So if I see Uh, If I meet someone named Mike, I might picture a microphone. If I meet someone named Alice, I might picture a white rabbit because that reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. It sounds a little bit silly, but it's very powerful and effective. 
I actually open presentations at conferences and corporate events around the world with naming hundreds of people in the audience after having heard each name only one time. It's by putting this concept into practice. Now, there's more to it than that, but I just wanted to introduce this idea that turning something that you want to remember into a visual that you can picture, it's very powerful and effective. So that's principle one. I'll let you comment that on that. I don't want to just go into a lecture here, but there are two other principles that we can get into here as well. No, I love that. I think that um, anybody, I mean, at, at the end of the day, if you can connect the dots with other senses, right, it helps reinforce. Um, just like when we associate with food, if we smell it, we know visually what we're about to encounter, right? Like if I smell, uh, let's say hypothetically, a watermelon, I know what a watermelon looks like, you know? So again, it goes back to our foundation, right? And and what we have been taught and what we learn. And I think with you, it's just sharpening and reteaching people those skill sets so that they become better at it, right? Perfect. So you actually hit on there without me introducing it first, you hit on the second principle. So the second of three overarching principles is once you've come up with a visual representation, try to involve additional senses as you can, because as you do that, you will be building more and more connections in your mind to the information and you're activating more areas of your brain. All right. So it's very important to involve as many senses as you can. It just takes a little bit of practice to do it, but it's going to make things easier to remember. And the third and final principle is simply while you're seeing and experiencing all this in your mind, make it weird, unusual, extraordinary in some way, if you can, because then you'll be taking advantage of the psychological aspect of human memory. And that is all of us, we tend to remember things with no little to no effort that catch us by surprise that are extraordinary. So if your listeners, wherever they're at right now, if an elephant crashed into the room that they're in right now, as they're watching or listening to this, they'd probably remember that for the rest of their lives and tell right. that story. You're never going to believe this. I was watching Kat Ramirez's show. She had a memory guy on there and an elephant crashed into the room as you know, the interview was going on. Um, it might be stuck there 40 years from now with no effort to commit it to memory it's just how the human mind works, realizing that we can take advantage of it, harness it, and apply it to things that would be very useful, names to get more of networking, professional development materials, foreign languages, and so on. Okay. So this is not just remembering people's name. This is the ability for people who have speeches or elevator pitches, things like that, right? That's what you're referring to. Yes, this is so applicable to so many, so many different business situations. I think it will become more clear to people if we go through a quick interactive exercise. It will probably take about three minutes to do this, but we'll, it will incorporate those three principles. And then once we've done that, we can really go into better detail as to how to apply this to various situations as a, as a business professional entrepreneur and so on so if you're up for going through it let let me know <laughs> okay well, let's do it let's let's put this in practice so that everybody gets a little glimpse of this okay awesome and it's up to you Kat if you want to try and see if you can recall all of these after we're done with the exercise I don't want to put you on the spot in the middle of your, your own, own interview here so I'm going to have everybody in your audience try to commit to memory the following random list of words without writing anything down, without okay. using a digital device to help you. The word list is going to be monkey, iron, rope, kite, house, paper, shoe, worm, envelope, pencil, river, rock, tree, cheese, and dollar. Now, I realize when this is like a corporate presentation, people in the audience, I can see them looking at me like, okay, this guy's crazy. There's no, we're, we're going, there's no way we're going to be able to remember that, not unless he gives us a lot of time to do it, but in fact, Everyone's going to have this down, watching this or listening in just about three minutes. And even weeks, months from now, people are still going to know all those words. The key is just to relax, have fun. I'm going to guide you through a visual. It's going to seem silly, unusual. But if you're smiling, giggling over the next few minutes, it's a really good sign you're going to remember everything. So let's just have fun with this. The first word was monkey. So I just want everybody to visualize a monkey with your eyes opened or closed, whatever's more comfortable for you in terms of visualization. So this monkey is dancing around, making monkey noises, all right? 
The monkey now picks up a gigantic iron, maybe like you would iron your clothes with, all right? See this monkey dancing around with this giant iron? The iron starts to fall, but a rope attaches itself to the iron. Maybe even feel the rope. Maybe it feels sort of rough. Interact with that rope, okay? You look up the rope, and you see that the other end of the rope is attached to a kite. It's flying around in the air. Maybe you reach up and try and touch that kite, okay? Try to picture that as best you can. The kite now flies into and crashes into a house. I want you to picture that house to the best of your ability. Just see this like a movie or cartoon playing in your head, a silly little cartoon. The house is completely covered in paper. For some weird reason, paper is the next word I had given. You see that paper in your mind. Out of nowhere now, a shoe appears and it starts to walk all over the paper. Maybe, maybe it's messing it up that shoe okay see the shoe the shoe smells pretty pretty badly so you decide to investigate and see why and you find a smelly worm crawling around inside of that shoe really see that smelly worm picture that smell the worm the worm now jumps out of the shoe and into an envelope maybe it's going to mail itself or something i don't know envelope was the next word really see it go into the envelope out of nowhere, a pencil appears. It starts to write all over that envelope. Maybe it's addressing it, that pencil. See the pencil in your mind as best you can. The pencil now jumps into a river, and there's a huge splash like you would never expect to see when it hits the river. You notice that this river is crashing up against a giant rock. It's crashing up against a giant rock. See that rock? This rock flies out of the river, and it crashes into a tree. Picture that, it, see the tree. This tree is growing cheese. You probably haven't seen a tree like that before. This one is growing cheese. And out of the cheese shoots a dollar. A dollar comes out of the cheese. Really see that dollar come out of it. Dollar was the last word. Now I'm gonna run through this in about 30 seconds and your job is to simply replay the silly little story that you've created in your mind. We started off with that monkey. I want you to see that monkey dancing around. The monkey picked up an iron see that iron when it started to fall a rope attached itself see that rope you look up the other end of the rope it was attached to a kite i want you to see that kite the kite crashed into the house see the house it was covered in something what was it see the paper something walked all over that paper i want you to see that shoe what was crawling in the shoe it was a little worm the worm jumped into the envelope really see that envelope see it go into the envelope what was writing on it? See that pencil. The pencil jumped into the river. Picture that river. The river was crashing into the rock. That rock flew into a tree. What was that tree growing? See the cheese. And what came out of the cheese? I want you to picture that dollar. Now it should be relatively easy for your audience to run through that little story in their minds each major object that you encounter in the story will give you the next random word. So I'd like people to try and give that a, tr you know, run through it and see if they can at least recite it themselves. Kat, if you're up for it, you can yep. try to recite those from memory. I will try. Okay, give it your best okay. shot. Monkey, iron, rope, kite, house, paper, shoe, worm, uh... Envelope, pencil, or pen, river, rock, and I forgot the last one. I forgot the last one. My rock. Yep, the rock flew into something and crashed money. into. Oh, the rock flew into something, but money came out. That you got tree, it. Tree money or something. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Great job. It was tree and dollar last. So very well done there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Under pressure. I mean, it's tough when I just bring that on you in the middle of your own interview, but that was excellent. So, so well done there. And I'm sure people in your audience that were following along, if they attempted that, if they didn't get 100%, they probably got close to it. Yeah. And all you would need to do is simply run through that silly little story in your mind two or three more times, and everybody would have that down perfectly, even backwards. Just run through the story in reverse. People would able, even be able to recite that backwards. So that simple technique there is called the story method. So it's just one of many techniques that memory champions like myself use to pull off what at first seemed like extraordinary memory feats, but there's nothing different about my brain compared to anyone else's. Right. I've just learned these types of techniques 
and put in a little bit of training and practice. It's really amazing what you can do in terms of memory with just the right approach and a little bit of fun. I, I hope people find that fun practice. And we can get into some practical business applications of this uh, as we go on. Yeah. I mean, okay, so I get that. I really enjoyed that. I I can see how clever that is and how it works. And, um, I, you know, I would have never have known it from the first time. So when you first said it. So uh, that was a great exercise. Thanks for sharing, Chester. That was awesome. Uh, my question to you is, is there uh, a demographic that's usually harder or easier in regards to memory? Is, is there or is it just every individual person is unique? Everyone is unique as far as their starting point in terms of memory. So we are all naturally inclined towards certain areas, right? So some people find that they're naturally better with music. Some people are better with creative writing. Other people are naturally more athletic. They're they're right away better than others in sports. Some people are more inclined toward memory. The good news is that no matter where you are at today in terms of your ability to remember things, you can dramatically improve with just the right techniques and a little bit of training and practice. And this can give you a huge advantage, I would say, especially in today's business world. Oh, no, absolutely. Because I can totally see the value in it. Um, When I am, I'll give an example, if I do presentations, the more that I do them, the more that my recall, my you know, my memory of how the the flow goes is way easier, you know, but if I were to do something new, that's going to be a challenge, right? And it's going to take a lot of time and work and effort to try to get it to really sink, you know, so I totally get that. Um, And I can see completely the value in it, because whenever you make a presentation, the more confident you are, the more that you can deliver seamlessly, the better, because then people see that as, wow, you really know your stuff, you know? So lots of value in understanding and knowing and having the ability to deliver something that you memorize or that, you know, especially if it's some kind of pitch or something, you know? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head there. So If you are able to give a presentation maintaining eye contact with your audience instead of shuffling through Mm -hmm. a bunch of notes, you're going to be a more effective, persuasive speaker. When you're able to memorize at least your key talking points, it gives you more confidence and the audience will feed off of that confidence. This really improves one's speaking ability. A quick application of what we've already covered to presentations. Let's say I were to give a talk about healthcare in the U.S., always a hot talking point. I might just start off my little story with the stethoscope that the doctor uses to check your heartbeat. That's just going to remind me the broad topic for today is healthcare. First talking point I might want to hit on, high cost of healthcare today in the U.S., maybe shooting out of the stethoscope or a bunch of $100 bills. Next thing I might want to hit on with the audience is that under current healthcare programs, sometimes in order to get things covered, we need to find a way to navigate through or cut through a lot of red tape. Maybe wrapping itself around the $100 bills is all of this red tape. So I think that gives people an idea of how you could just outline all of your major talking points, sub points, then build an interesting little story to remind you of that so you can at least minimize the amount of notes. So there I gave an example of maybe a speech, but this could also be directly applied to meeting with potential clients, right? Yep. If you can do your research and be able when you're meeting with them to say, hey, here are five, 10 key things that I learned about you in your research, you and your company in my research, here are five to 10 key ways as to how myself and my services are a perfect match for yep. what you're doing. Here are five things I learned about your competitors and why my services are gonna help you to address those issues. When you can do that, and maintain eye contact, just show that you know your stuff. It is so impressive when most professionals just really can't do this nowadays because of becoming so dependent on devices and the the lack these days in memory skills. So there's an opportunity to be more impressive and more memorable. I know. I love it. I love it. This is awesome. Okay. So when you're working with somebody or a company, are you doing one-on-one? Are you doing group sessions? Kind of give us a flavor feel for that. 
Yeah, so I really do it all. So I give keynote presentations, 60 to 90 minutes at conferences and corporate events. I do in-depth half day and one day corporate training workshops. And I also do private coaching with executives uh, around the world, really, because we do them uh, via phone. Basically on the phone call, I'm guiding you through these visualization type exercises and then the applications to your career and personal life. So I do all, all of that. Okay. And then if someone was looking into this, is this like a, a long term, short term? Like, how, what is the length of, you know what I mean, the, your process and how, how, how do they get there? So it really depends on the individual, but for private coaching, if you really, it's your goal to yep. make this a skill, turn this into a real advantage in your professional life, I usually recommend starting out. People usually sign up for 12 sessions. We mm -hmm. go over the basics, the general applications, but then we start to narrow down into that specific individual's interest as to what they really want to get better at remembering. Okay. Um, but so for corporate training, it's usually just a half day or one day. And then a lot of times the company will also purchase access for the memory school yeah. uh, for the employees so that they can do more in-depth training on top of the half or one day training. Okay. Any success stories you want to share with us? Anything that you can think of? Yeah, many different types of success stories. So I've worked with people that have had what they felt to be various issues. So some people with ADHD, uh, yep. for instance, and dyslexia, even so what would be considered for some people uh, learning things that were affecting their ability to learn. Mm -hmm. We address those by using these types of techniques. I took someone with ADHD and dyslexia who couldn't remember even five numbers in a row all the way up to remembering an 80 digit sequence of computer wow. ge generated random digits perfectly forwards and backwards in the United States memory championship. I took him to compete in the US memory championship and that, that story is on the blog and in my website so you can read about that. To uh, on, on another, in another direction, an executive who wanted to be able to remember the names of all of his employees, um, the CEO of headsets.com has been a long term uh, private training client of mine. So people have succeeded in various ways depending on their goals. But r really anybody can benefit from this type of training. Oh, no, I agree. I completely agree. How long have you been doing this, Chester? So now I have been a speaker for 15 plus years. I started wow. this as a career in 2008, uh, soon after I won the United States Memory Championship. That is fantastic. That's awesome. And you also have a TED Talk. Is that correct? Yeah, I did. Uh, I was a speaker for TEDx Bay Area and people can find my TEDx talk on YouTube. And what was the topic of that? So that one was just general memory fun 101 okay. is okay. what we called it. So basically, you know, you only have 15 minutes for a TED Talk. Yep. So it was just a quick introduction to some general principles. Uh, it was funds, thus memory fun 101. Yeah. And then, you know, some very quick applications of those principles. And I also named more than 100 people in the audience in the TEDx audience to, to begin that presentation. Oh, my God, that's impressive. <laughs> I, I commend you because that's impressive and I can appreciate that. Uh, okay, so how can people connect to you or what is it that you're offering today? Sure, so if people want to connect with me for general inquiries or maybe speaking engagements, it would be internationalmanofmemory.com. If you have a specific date in mind for a corporate event, you can fill out the booking request right there. LinkedIn is also a good uh, way to get in touch with me for general inquiries. If anyone is interested specifically in more training for themselves as an individual, you'd like to work on better remembering names, presentations, so on, foreign language vocabulary, even course material, memoryschool.net is my online training program. You can visualize a giant fishing net to remember that it's .net. So memoryschool.net, and I set up code CAT, uh, K-A-T, in honor of being on your show, CAT, and the first 100 people to use that will receive a $0 enrollment fee. They'll see the enrollment fee completely waived for them. They'll only start with the first month of access and you can remain a member of that program as long as you'd like. 
Awesome. That's fantastic. So um, please make sure if you're tuning in and you're just now catching the end, make sure you hit rewind, catch it to beginning because uh, Chester shared a lot of great information with us in regards to memory uh, training and a little memory quiz, which was fun. And you can do it yourself because you can just review it uh, all over again. This was great information. Anything else that we should know, anything coming up or anything we should be tuning into for you, Chester? Nothing uh, specifically at this point. I hope everybody will share this show with their friends, colleagues, family members when they see this episode air, if they enjoyed it. That way more people can benefit from these, I I feel, important concepts, things that can really benefit them right away, professionally and personally. And again, I hope people will keep in touch. Uh, I'll look out for hopefully some LinkedIn requests and uh, people can also attend the memory school. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a fantastic uh, solution you're providing. A lot of people do need to brush up on memory. It is a great thing to perfect you know, I'm a, I'm of the believer of, and I tell this to my team, is you have to invest in yourself in order to get a very better return, right? So this is one of the things that you can invest in is your memory, which of course is going to pay off for sure. That will definitely pay off. So it's uh, you will see the return, you know, once you get the basic skills down. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chester, for sh- sharing all this wonderful information. I love having you on my show. Thank you so much for having me, Kat. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to hopefully keeping in touch. Thank you. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me and the Stand Out and Grow podcast. Uh, if I hope you enjoyed this. I really, I personally did enjoy it. I love the little exercise we walked through from memory. And again, if you are just now catching this, I would highly recommend you to hit the rewind button, catch it from the beginning so that you learn these little tips that uh, Chester shared with us. And then he also has a promo code for you to save on his memory school. And again, it's not just for the professional. This is students, um, grandparents, um, you know, parents, anybody who needs help with memory. This is a really great course to uh, check out and uh, see if it's a good, a good fit for you until next time. Um, You got this, and I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Stand Out and Grow. Check out all the notes and links at www.standoutandgrow.com. I am so thankful to you for helping this show continue to grow. I want to keep producing content that you want to hear. So please leave me some feedback. I look forward to bringing you more resources and information to help your business stand out and grow. Please follow us on social media and make sure you follow this podcast so you can learn more about helping your business stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. Until next time, you got this. Advertise helps businesses stand out and grow with affordable advertising options. We will help you make good business decisions so you can save money and not just throw it against the wall to see if it sticks. Get your free strategic advertising analysis today so you can see the opportunities to stand out and grow your business. Visit www.standoutandgrow.com offers page to learn more.